Hi, Steve here. Now that we've had stuff at a winner out there for a while, we get emails and relatively they are on the same sort of question. So this video is done before you hit the start button to alleviate you having to email us with uh, why is this happening, why is that happening, how can I stop that. So without further ado, let's move on and show you how to set up the bot. Setting the races and using the reload button um, is one of the main emails that we get. Now it's important to remember the reload button um, that this reloads the fields every hour. So if there's been race delays and times have been re-amended, the reload button will reload the races at the correct time. But also what it does do is if you've selected, for example, only to do handicap races or non-handicap races, if you use the reload button and untick the races that you don't want, when the reload button reloads again in an hour, it will replace those races. So if you are picking and choosing, cherry picking the races that you want, then you can't use the reload button. So let's go into the bot now and see uh, exactly what it is I'm talking about. Okay, here we are with the bot now. And this is the races that we're talking about. When you, when you first open the bot, you'll find that all of these are ticked. All the races are ticked. This is on a VPN and the connection's a bit slow at the moment. So all the races are ticked like that when you um, first open the bot. So the best thing to do is to untick all the races. Once the races are unticked, okay, once the races are all blank like that, tick the races that you want. So in this case, for example, we'll be doing Australia. So we tick Australia, we tick reload the market, and the market comes up with Australian racing and the next race here. This is the next race up. Now, the important other thing, just to digress a little bit here, is in the commissions in Australia you use 6.5 in the UK and uh, everywhere else it's 5%. So you need to make sure that that commission is matching the country. So you can't really use Australia, Great Britain and Ireland and then tick auto reload because the commission is different here. So once you've clicked that, if you want auto reload, you click that button there. Okay, and now that this will automatically reload the Australian races um, every hour. So if you wanted to run the Australian races for two days and you had that ticked, then that would just keep reloading the Australian races and betting for the next two days. As I said, if you've got auto reload clicked, ticked here and you say you don't want to do, say you wouldn't want to do the meetings at Mooney Valley for example and you untick them, in an hour's time when the auto reload reloads the markets again, the Mooney Valley races would become active again. So that's what you've got to keep in mind when you're doing auto reload. I don't use it. Okay. So this is what I'd have. I'm having Australian racing and 6.5 to commission. So I've set up my races now. Okay. Uh, allow harness racing. Don't use this until you've done some research into harness racing. Okay. Uh, harness racing, for those who don't know, is racing with a cart behind them or in France if uh, sometimes they ride on top of the harness horses. Okay, now that is how to load the markets and the auto reload button, which as I said is one of the biggest um, um, areas that we get emails for. Now another area that we get emails for is over here with the clear button. Now what happens is there is a built in staking plan which is a loss recovery staking plan that bets to the instructions that you've given it here. Now the thing is if you want to use the clear button and clear it, what it does, it clears the just the staking se sequence. So it will go back to the very first stake level again. It doesn't, if I just click results, by clicking the clear button, does not clear out what you've got here. Okay, so just keep that in mind. What it does, it starts the staking system from beginning again. In order to use the clear button, 
you have to click on the stop button, which I won't do at the moment because I am running a sequence. Click on the stop button, click clear, and that will take you back to the very beginning of the staking system and then push start and away you go. Okay, I only use this um, at the beginning of the day if I'm restarting fresh at the beginning of the day. Okay, so that's how to use the clear button. Another area we get emails from is the bot went past my stop loss. Okay, so let's just have a look at stop profit and stop loss. The stop profit is the amount that you want to win when you get a winner, obviously. So if I put in five there, I am trying to get a winner. When I get a winner, it will give me five pounds. Okay, my stop loss is at 100. Now, if the sequence goes and I get to 99, my stop loss, my accumulated losses are at 99, the bot will not just place a bet for one pound to make up the 100. The 100 has to be breached before the bot will restart at the beginning or stop, whatever you've ticked underneath there. If you leave it blank, it will reach the stop loss. Um, once it goes over the stop loss, it will not bet again. So in this case, what I'm just saying, if my um, last bet was at 99, the bot would still place the next bet in order to try and recover my losses of 99 plus my five pound profit. So it's quite conceivable and it will happen all the time that your stop loss will be over the 100. So that could be 110, 120, could be up to even 150 if you're using low odds, if you've set your bot for low odds. So keep that in mind. Um, no point having a stop loss there of 100 and only having 100 in the bank because it will not place that last bet that you need, um, hopefully to recover all your losses and make you raise profit. Okay, so keep in mind, you will always go invariably over the stop loss but it will only be one bet over it because it's got to be breached before the bot will either stop betting or go to what you've instructed below now if you have both of these boxes unticked then it will stop once it's gone over the stop loss that will be it it won't continue and same here with the tick button for the five pound pound profit if you had that tick it makes a five pound profit it will restart the sequence again if you only want to take five pound or ten pound and, and only take the first winner you leave that unticked okay the other things are pretty straightforward uh, we're bidding in the win market and uh, we're ignoring joint favorites not that that really ever comes into play this purple area is the backing and if we click on the lay button it's just exactly the same, I'll just do that there, it's exactly the same, but in lay, and these two tabs are completely independent, they have their own independent state, and they have their own um, stop losses and everything else, so, so they work like two separate bots. Um, the minimum price up here is, uh, it will not bet unless that price, between that price and this price here that I've set, it's up to you, what you want to put in, seconds before post, I bet 25 seconds before the, before the off um, and the range of runners I've got 5 to 20 but the important thing is how that stop loss works so that's the setup that I've been using um, I am looking at changing it a little bit but it's only now that I've finished the trials that I can actually start experimenting especially with Australian racing only having one account and doing a trial I wasn't able to go off the edge and do anything different Okay, now the next thing um, I need to tell you, if uh, this is on a VPS, it's a virtual private server, it's running in the UK for me and it runs 24 hours a day. Um, so I don't have to worry about my laptop going into sleep mode or anything like that. If you are running on a laptop, make sure that you don't use the sleep mode, otherwise the laptop goes to sleep, the bot will not bet. So this is another argument why um, virtual servers are so good. Um, but the thing with it is, in the results, the export button will not work on a virtual server simply because the virtual servers do not have Excel installed on them. Okay, so um, if you want a record of those, do what I do, go into Betfair and take your records off Betfair. 
If you're running this on a desktop or a laptop, we'll then ensure the export uh, button works fine. But remember, on a VPS virtual private server, that, that does not work. Okay, now the next thing, um, the next important thing is, is if you do have a problem, uh, just before I do that, it's, imp it's important, even though we are betting sometimes below the bet fair minimum, that you do have enough money in your wallet. Because remember, if you're betting, say you're betting, you want a 50p every time you get a winner, the software actually has to bet to the um, to the bet fair minimum level. So if it's two pound, we'll have to make a two pound bet and then we'll have to lay back so that the bet equals 50p. So you've got to make sure you've got enough money in your wallets for it to place the higher bets in order to lay back to get back to the smaller amount. Okay, so make sure um, that you've got plenty of money in your wallets um, for the bot to bet to instructions. Quite often we get people saying the bets, the bets aren't going on, the bot's not doing what it's wanted, and we're having a look, and they don't have enough money in their wallets. Um, they said, but I'm only doing 50p bets. Yeah, but you still need money to make a two pound bet and then for the bot to lay back again. Okay, so make sure you've got more than enough money in your wallets for what you want to bet with. The other thing too here is the minimum amount matched. Um, occasionally uh, we have people saying, especially when they're laying, that the bot is not laying at the, at the uh, minimum odds or maximum odds. It's because there's not enough liquidity and you'll often see if you're doing some Australian races or American races, it might be 2.6 here, but it could be, this figure here could be five. The lay figure could be five. So it's not, these figures have got to be very close together like they are here in order for, for you to be able to lay below the minimum. Um, so keep in mind the liquidity, I wouldn't probably go any lower than five or 10, and especially if you're laying, I would even make that 20, 30 or 40,000 because laying is very tricky um, in a very uh, Ill illiquid race, you can get left with your um, lay bed hanging dry. So make sure that you, there's liquidity in the races, especially if you're laying. Okay, so I think those are the main areas that uh, we get. Oh, one other area too, if you get, if you do have a bot, a bit, a bot problem, before you email Michael, go into your program files, it's in the C drive, just and it's just below the video, the direct link here, the link that you need to look for. Go into this here, sorry, that's a duplicate there. Into this location and get the day, the, the latest log files. And that is a, a text file. If you um, paste that into your email when you're writing to Michael with what the problem is, this file that you do that with will tell us exactly how the bot is betting and where the problem may be or if the bot is doing exactly as your instructions. So the two things if you email Michael is if you can take a screenshot of your settings um, and also the log file, attach the log file and also tell him what you think the problem, what the bot's not doing that you think it should be doing. That way he can get back, get back to you um, instead of exchanging emails back and forth, he can get into it and find out exactly what you may need to change on your bot setting. Okay, so there is another tutorial video, but this one here is designed to set up before you start um, the bot working, so it will keep um, requests and that down to a minimum. Okay, on behalf of Michael, uh, the creator of this bot, and myself, Steve Davidson, thanks for watching this video. Cheers.